Okay, good evening. I'm going to take a very practical approach to this. I think Mel laid out the philosophical foundations of what's happening. You could see the secularization process taking place in our country. I wanted to come at it from a perspective of what are the subtle and not so subtle attacks on Christmas very specifically and try to come up with a a list of attacks that we need to be aware of so that we can counter these. A lot of times we aren't aware of what is happening, right? We don't know what's happening because it moves so slowly and gradually. It's kind of like the frog in the kettle. Did you know that you can actually boil a frog in the kettle on the stove? You can, you can actually do that. I don't, wouldn't advise trying it. Just take my word for it. They've tested this out. You can actually boil a frog. And the way you do it, you don't boil the water and then put the frog in because he'll jump out because it's really hot. What you do is you put the frog in first and then heat the water gradually. And then as the temperature rises, the frog thinks, hmm, it isn't any warmer than it was just a second ago and then the next minute goes by. Well, it isn't that much more than it was last minute, and he keeps ratcheting up his tolerance until finally the water's boiling and he's boiled alive. And unfortunately, that's sort of what happens to Christians and those who look to the Bible and those who honor the church. We are sort of like the frog in the water when it comes to Christmas because all of these things have sort of come along in the last, I would say, three or four decades. I can actually see the, 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 the development of the attacks on Christmas during my lifetime. And I can see them happening because of my sensitivity to it as a pastor. I can see it happening almost every year. Every year there's always something new that comes along that I'm shocked and then it's happened so frequently I'm not shocked anymore and then the next year something new happens and I'm shocked about that and then I'm not shocked about it because it just becomes normal. It becomes a normal part and so here we are today and I wanted to just step back a little bit and say okay what are some of the, the subtle attacks that you don't hardly realize that are really attacking Christmas, uh, attacking Christmas. Now, what is Christmas in its essence? What is a celebration of Christmas? What is it that is being subtly and not so subtly attacked? What is Christmas a celebration of? Well, I think the best succinct definition of what Christmas is comes from Matthew 121. I'll just read that verse and I'll explain why I think that is the essence of Christmas. It says in Matthew 121, she, that is Mary, will give birth to a son, and you, Joseph, are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Now that is the very core and content of Christmas. And then all of the other things uh, go around it like you have the magi coming in and then you have the shepherds wandering in from the flocks and then you have the angels uh, declaring the message and you have Mary uh, giving birth to Jesus and you have Joseph standing watch making sure it all comes together the way God's will is and so you have all of these different factors but at the very core of it it is the birth of Jesus Christ, the beginning of our salvation. That birth that led all the way up to the cross, the death of Christ on the cross for the sins of the world, for all who believe. And that is the essence of Christmas, the birth of the Savior Jesus Christ. I often look back at my life and I think of the one scene in the Charlie Brown Christmas where I believe it was Linus who stood up on the stage and said, what is the true meaning of Christmas? And then he began to recite the nativity accounts of the Bible. And that is a perfect illustration of what Christmas is all about. And it came from the Charlie Brown Christmas movie. But that was 
30 or 40 years ago. You might not see that today on TV, but that was the essence of Christmas. Well, what are the attacks today so that we can be sensitive to this, so that we can warn other people about it and we can keep ourselves ready so that we know what's going on in our society? Well, I've looked at all the lists of different attacks, subtle and not so subtle, and I'm going to rank some that I think are the top attacks. Now, you may not have thought about this, but I think the main attack, it's not a direct attack, but it's an indirect attack, but I believe the biggest threat, the biggest force against the biblical Christian Christmas season is commercialization. I really believe that. And we have been a prosperous nation our standard of living has risen. I still remember my grandparents telling me that at one time they had to go out to the outhouse. And that's inconceivable to me. And now we have people, uh, they don't, families don't have to today share a car. They have their own cars. And we have almost everyone who wants to can get educated in college. And we have a standard of living that's rising in an economic power. We're an economic power, the United States. And whether we know it or not, what has happened is Christmas has gotten caught up in that economic mechanism of our nation. And so what we have today is an emphasis on buying and sales and bargains and shopping and you got to get this and you got to get that. And if you look at the statistics, the economic activity around December is the biggest month of the year. It's an economic powerhouse month. And what is happening is that the stores and businesses that make all their money, most of their money in December, are trying to convince people that that is the month you've got to buy things, you've got to buy stuff, you've got to fill your house with stuff, and you've got to give stuff away, and you've got to get stuff. And if you don't get enough stuff for Christmas, well, then go out and get more stuff after Christmas for the sales. And we've seen just in the last five years, I've seen the shopping season for Christmas extending. First, it, it, it used to be after Thanksgiving, then, okay, you shop for Christmas. Now it's before Thanksgiving, and now I even saw this year they're starting to do it after Halloween. And what will it be the next year? What will it be the next year? So, in other words, this shopping season is, is a huge, huge time period. And the hype and the advertisements and everything all together. And so, what this all tends to do is diminish the reason for the season. It diminishes the focus on Jesus. It's no longer the simple baby Jesus in the manger. Now it's all the lights and the flashing and the presents and the gifts and the shopping sprees and sales and bargains and all of the things that go along with the commercialization of Christmas. And so it loses its focus. Christmas becomes a economic tool rather than a, a vehicle for remembering the birth of Jesus Christ. And we see this happening more and more today. And it's not a direct attack. There's no conspiracy. There's no people behind the scenes saying, we've got to destroy Christmas by pumping up the economic aspect of presence and buying. No, there's nobody. I don't believe that there's anybody behind the scenes trying to, to destroy Christmas through money. But the effect is the same thing. And it has happened accidentally. You can say it, it, it's an accidental occurrence, but it still happens all the same. And so we have to be careful to not get caught up into that. And we have to take stock every year and say, okay, I'm not going to get caught up in all of this commercialization. I'm going to keep myself disciplined. I'm going to keep myself under control. I'm going to not get led by the retailers. I'm not going to let Sears, Kmart, Walmart, Target, and all the other big retailers lead us along. We're going to 
have to consciously decide, no, 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 that's enough, that's enough, that's enough. I remember when I was a child, my parents said, for Christmas, you can ask for one thing. Now, that didn't mean I would only get one thing, but I could only ask for one main thing for Christmas. I, didn't, I couldn't bring out this whole list of things that you see some kids go to the mall with and say, this is what I want. I wanted this big truck, and then I want this, and I want this. And No, you, you got to get it simple. And uh, I'm glad they did that because they taught me a little self-control, a little self-discipline. And, and they didn't, I don't know if they consciously knew it, but they were trying, they were keeping Christmas in perspective. Um, Christmas was not being dominated by the economics of the season. Okay, so that's the commercialization of Christmas. It's an attack on, on the traditional uh, Christmas nativity understanding. But the, there's a second attack, and this one is even more subtle. This one, in fact, someone might contest that it is an attack, but it is. If you think about it, I'll explain. There's the sentimentalism of family, friends, and social aspects of holiday the social aspects of the Christmas season. Now, when you think about the original Christmas season, the birth of Jesus Christ, the surrounding, the Bethlehem, the pastoral setting, the sheep out in the field, the star in the sky, and you think of the meaning of it and the birth of Jesus Christ foretold by the prophets, there's so much to be excited about that original Christmas vision and the original vis uh, vision of the historical account of Jesus Christ. But today, a lot of times, if you go up, as they do sometimes, they take a microphone on the street and they say, what does Christmas mean to you? And you know what? Almost 40 or even 50% of the people they talk to, they ask, what does Christmas mean to you? They say, Christmas means to me family, getting together with friends, good friends and family, sharing a meal. That's the essence of Christmas. But you see, that's not right. That's not true. That's not the historical Christmas. But we are, we are being subtly attacked as Christians in our Christmas season celebration by this Influence that says, and there are commercial retailers who pump this vision also, but it's more of a left to itself. People will tend to, it's, it's more of a humanistic kind of a vision of what Christmas is. Now, there is a lot of good that can come when families get together. In fact, I'm looking forward to getting together with family around Christmas time and getting together with friends and, and having social gatherings and having good meals and all of that is part of the Christmas celebration. But if it becomes the center of Christmas, then there is a problem. And that is the attack that we see on Christmas this, this time of the year in our day and age. It's become something that it really wasn't. It's become something that it isn't. It's becoming over-commercialized. And it's all, all over-sentimentalized into the point where people are confusing Christmas with getting together and family time and all the other stuff. Um, these are not things that are the essence of Christmas. These are things that are the secondary things, that are good things. And there's nothing wrong with getting presents at Christmas time. There's nothing wrong with giving presents at Christmas time. There's nothing wrong, in my estimation, with a Christmas tree. I know there was once a man in one of my churches that I pastored, and he brought, there's a verse in Isaiah. Is it Isaiah? Where it says, they bring in a Christmas tree. Uh, no, they bring in a tree, and they carve it up, and they make it into an idol, and whatnot. And he was saying, see, that's the Christmas tree. That's not the Christmas tree. I don't know anybody who sees the Christmas tree as an idol or even um, even makes too much of it. I mean, it's sitting in the corner there and it looks pretty and everything. I don't know anybody that treats it as an idol. Um, I suppose you could, 
there could be a, you know, some earth pagans, that group or whatever, could treat the Christmas tree as an idol. But I don't think that that verse refers to a Christmas tree. So I have nothing against Christmas trees. I like Christmas trees. Um, my family has a tradition. We used to go cut them down until they cost more to cut down than just to buy them. So they started buying. But uh, presents under a tree, that's great. But that's not the center of Christmas, and that's not the true meaning of the reason for the season. Jesus is the reason for the season, and we don't want to lose that. Now, And also, the family gatherings and the social gatherings, the office parties, and all of the other things that occur at, at Christmas time, these are generally good things. It's good to get people together. It's good to see relatives you haven't seen all year. It's good to have friends come in from out of town. It's good to socialize. And, and, and build those family connections. But again, if that's all Christmas is, or if that's the main thing about Christmas, we're off the mark. And that is an attack on Christmas as the Bible describes it. And as our nation, as Mel had pointed out before, as our nation had understood Christmas for many, many decades, this is a departure from traditional Christmas. Now, the third um, attack is what Mel alluded to a little bit, and that is the secularizing force in the move to promote a general holiday season, that pluralism that he was describing, where you, you put everything in the stew. You put Kwanzaa. Uh, I'll talk more about Kwanzaa in a minute. You put Hanukkah. And they've even come up with a figure now, you know, to be sort of like Santa Claus, Hanukkah Harry. Or you have, and they have Hanukkah songs. And you take a Jewish, minor, minor, minor Jewish holiday that probably would never have been known by hardly anybody and wouldn't have seen the light of day in a wider culture. But because of pluralism, all of these little things are bumped up and pushed up and put on the table as equal to Christmas and Jesus, the birth of Jesus. And you have the winter solstice, which was always practiced by the earth pagans. Uh, maybe the people of Stonehenge that built Stonehenge practiced the winter solstice. But it was never anything this big. I don't know if the pilgrims would have even understood what a winter solstice is. Maybe, maybe they've heard about it from from the ancient times, but it certainly wasn't anything that was practiced in our country um, until recently when this pluralistic idea came around. And so the watering down of the real true Christmas reason for the season we see happening before our very eyes. We see this in the schools. Mel talked about that. Um, you you go into a school today and you will look around and it will be very difficult to find a manger, to find any reference to Jesus Christ. Even though Christmas has the name Christ right in it, you don't see hardly any references in the public schools. They are not allowed to sing references to Christ or Silent Night or all of these great hymns of our tradition because those are specifically Christian and you don't want to offend anybody. It's become a very politically correct situation in the public schools. And it's the same way in City Hall. I remember when I was walking down Main Street in Jamestown, I think it was a couple of Christmases ago, I looked in the windows in some of the publicly uh, owned buildings and I saw winter scenes, I saw snowman, I saw Santa, I saw snowflakes, tinsel, mistletoes, all kinds of things. One thing I never saw was anything related to the manger, Jesus, the wise men, angels, the magi. None of the things that make up the essence of Christmas, the very season that we're all celebrating, those were all taken away. And that's part of this promoting of a general holiday season. Jerry Seinfeld even went so far as to make up a holiday. Let me read to you a little script from one of the episodes of the Seinfeld show when it was running. And this is a character named Frank Costanza. I don't know if you remember this show. But 
here is this, a scene between him and talking to another person. Frank, referring to this pole, he has a pole. He says, it's made from aluminum, very high strength to weight ratio. Kruger, I find your belief system fascinating. Frank Costanza, many Christmases ago, I went to buy a doll for my son. I reached for the last one they had, but so did another man. As I rained blows upon him, I realized there had to be another way. Cosmo Kramer says, what happened to that doll? It was destroyed, but out of it, a new holiday was born. A festivus for the rest of us. Kramer, is there no tree? Frank, no. Instead, there's a pole. Requires no decoration. I find tinsel distracting. Frank Costanza, welcome newcomers. The tradition of festival, Festivus begins with the airing of grievances. And I've got a lot of problems with you people. And now you're going to hear about it. And then it goes on. So here is a new festival, a new celebration around the Christmas time called Festivus. And we can laugh at that. We can say, that's funny. I mean, that's, that's a joke, right? That's not, there's nobody really does that. Well, it's kind of caught on now. And there are secular people that actually celebrate the holiday of Festivus. This totally made up holiday. Well, we shouldn't be so surprised because if we look at some of the other ones that are on our calendars now, for example, Kwanzaa, same thing. Made up holiday. Yes, if you look it up, it's made up holiday. And it's put into December just to be alongside of Christmas and Hanukkah and the winter solstice and now even something like Festivus. And so all of these traditions and all of these things thrown into the stew, it waters down the whole Christmas season. And that's an attack. That's an attack. It's, it's a subtle, sideway attack on the true Christmas season. And I could go on and on and on. I could show uh, other things that challenge and really attack Christmas. For example, have you noticed lately that a lot of the sporting events are piled onto the holidays? And if you go, uh, if you tune in on Christmas Day, you're going to find football game after football game. And they're trying to pump it up to try to get you to watch TV on Christmas Day. They're trying to draw you away from family and friends. They're trying to draw you away from church. They're trying to draw you away from the observance and the remembrance of Jesus Christ born in the manger of Bethlehem. And they're trying to get you to do what? What's so special? Watching football. And they're trying to do that. And that waters down Christmas also. Then, there's an, then of course, I mentioned before the shopping. Um, we see this now on Thanksgiving. They draw you into the stores on on Thanksgiving. It's not the holiday. It's not the day before. It's not the day after. It used to be the day after. Everybody was out there rushing around. Now it's Thanksgiving Day. They get you into the store. And this waters down Thanksgiving. Well, they do, they're do. they going to do the same thing on Christmas. You watch. I don't know if they're doing it yet. Maybe some of you know. But they're going to have, later in the day on Christmas... Christmas Day sales. They're going to do that. I, that's a prophecy. I'm not a prophet, but I'm going to prophesy that that is going to be coming soon. And then, of course, there's all the other things, and we could go on and on and on. But the point is, and Mel has laid the foundation, it's because of this secularization trend that's occurring. And what we have to do is we have to, as Christians, we have to keep ourselves from falling into these things we have to have that self-discipline to say okay we're going to remember christmas and we're and you, we need to think about okay how should this day be celebrated how should this uh, season be celebrated because if we don't think about it intentionally we're just going to wander around and get caught up in the whole crowd and we're going to find ourselves uh, 
just like Frank Costanza, fighting for that little doll in the store and beating people up. Every year they talk, they show video clips. I don't know if you've seen these about people getting into huge fights during the holiday season. Wow. What, how inappropriate, you know. Christmas season and you're fighting and clawing. And we're going to get caught up into that if we don't want Or we're going to get sucked in front of the television set all day, Christmas Day, so that the whole day is shot with just watching a common sporting event you can watch any other time. We have to fight for Christmas in our own lives, in our own family, and in our own churches. I failed to mention that one of the deluding factors of Christmas nowadays is even the churches sometimes fall into the trap of trying to be so relevant that they spend 90% of their Christmas pageant with Frosty and Santa and all of the secular traditions that we have in the culture and then maybe the last five minutes, Jesus. And that dilutes the message. We have a message that is life-changing. We have a message that's world-shaping. It shaped the world. It has changed the world. Jesus Christ, his birth in, in Bethlehem. And so we need to present that message and not get sidetracked, not get watered down, not get diluted. And we need to be those evangelists that promote the true meaning of Christmas. It's up to us because we're not going to get any encouragement from society to promote true Christmas. So we have to do it ourselves. We have to do it amongst our family members and our relatives and friends and all the people that we have contact with. We need to proudly say Merry Christmas to people during the Christmas season and not shy away from that. And in doing these little things like that, we are holding up the true meaning of Christmas and we can do our part. And perhaps God's willing, God gives us the grace and the power, we'll see a revival, we'll see a turnaround, and we'll see Christmas beginning, the true meaning of Christmas beginning to arise once again in our nation. Thank you.